阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Uh, chapter, I mean section three sixty sixty two clause. Uh, we're just gonna, you know, run through this. Basically, based on what Master Jin Kung said. Last week we talked about um, you know, this is still under the same. This is a longer one, you know, unscrupulous behavior, uh, without any um. Uh, Sense of shame and sense of inhibition, you know, just do things without, uh, you know, considering others and you know your own um dignities. And this one we need to um you know talk in detail. So the translation is not not wrong, but yeah, it talks about abandoning something that is following your conscience or true nature. And going against it instead, um, uh, so this is this is exactly a problem. Uh, what is you know what is our true nature? What is our conscience? You know, and basic understanding is things that are kind to others is is our conscience. You know, being doing right by others. Do not you know. Commit any sort of uh, harm towards them. That's what we mean by uh, our conscience. And if you, you know, use this kind of uh, mindset and look at the society nowadays, and is people more towards, you know, bottom mind, you know, bottom, bottom of the barrel mentality, or you know, as in the Will do whatever it takes to get what they want, you know, at the expense of others, or, you know, do they have some sense of restraint and control, you know, even though it's what they want, but they will be more、um, careful on the approach. So, <laughs> these are these are you know very very crucial of、uh, you know how a society conducts itself and how it. How it gets to,、uh, you know, how how it how it gets about.、Um, just because it doesn't have monetary value on top of it, or you know, just because you know it might have some religious cloak on top of it, does not mean it's、uh, something superstitious, right? It's always about what is right, you know, by others, by yourself, and at the end of the day, what kind of person do you want to be? What do you want to see yourself, you know, in this kind of relationship going forward? You want something that is full of dangers, full of worries that you know this person might、um, accept you or do something behind your back, you know, and then you use all so you all your energy trying to avoid that instead of you know living a life、uh, without that much level of care with you know trustworthy. Society, or at least communities, that you can, you know,、um, not to worry about, and you can, you know, feel at home, feel at ease, you know, living in that kind of environment. Everyone wants this later, of course. To do that, we all need to, you know, do our parts, right? And this needs to start from home.、Uh, so in that, in this context, what we talk about competition is. You know, from the most easiest understanding is our conscience. You know what is right by us, by others, and 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 am I by ethics right? Am I trying to be the person to the best version of you know the person I could be? That's not easy. You know, it it's so many choices facing you. Sometimes you got swayed by the current of the event. You might lose. Your footing, you might you know follow your desires, and you sink on the deep end. To pull yourself back is not an easy task,、um, because desire is really strong, and you you just sometimes you just you know you talk yourself 
out of it say I um, you know I'm not going to do this and that but your action says otherwise it basically you're not incoherent you know you might want to do good but your action might do the others otherwise because you're so used to the you know chasing after thrills chasing after you know um, your desires you know without um, without enough hand brakes on it and when it comes you know condition comes you will automatically turn on that autopilot you know you just pursue whatever you like your eyes likes to see your body likes to touch your whatever you likes to eat um what you likes to hear you know, only hear what you want to hear this is a very common problem for everyone um sometimes you know wake up calls are not easy to swallow they are very harsh sometimes they are very uh you know, shocking and you can't you won't like it in the beginning you know it's not something you will just take it happily um, being able to realize that is already a big gap big step and to able to actually take in the teachings right to restrain our endless bottomless desire it's like a bottomless hole like a black hole basically suck everything in spitting nothing out so this is how our desire is and it's not easy right why is evil ideologies man i mean it's a very crude translation but it's a it's it's not wrong what is evil ideology it means go against your conscience you know doing things on our at the expense of others it, you got hooked basically by what you want to see you see what you want to see you hear what you want to hear and uh, you're not uh, aware of it or you're not wanting to wake up from it so you sunk into this um, uh, this couch or something, whatever you know or even just the mindset you know the, the 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 way you think about the way you go around go about things is not um, it's not in line with your conscience you know, uh, you know, do whatever I want at the expense of others. You know, I don't care. You know, um, harm other people. You know, directly or you know indirectly, because you do things, you rush things head on, you know, without thinking how your action affect others. So this, this, this is, this is why you know, this is what we call like bottom line in a sense. And like you, 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 what's your bottom line? Where do you draw the line? What do you say? Actually, I can't. I can't do this. You know, this is not the right thing to do. It's very important to have that. You know, uh, a bottom line because uh, if we just go about our daily life in, you know, just to feed this body, eat well, sleep well, and enjoy the sound, enjoy the excitement, the thrill, we're going nowhere um, because those all these things are, you know, like excitement from outside it's not long lasting it's just it's dopamine whatever homo, uh, hormones they are just you know sensory stuff you know, used to excite your flesh and bone but it does not touches your heart does not really make you you know awake you sunk in and you're not able to get out um, that's why people abandon the teachings because they really especially beginners it's very hard when they saw all they see is that they are you know the way they see the way they say the way they think it's already been formulated for so many lifetimes and when they get in contact with outside world they only see what they want to see here they want to hear you know, stuck in that loop can't get out so what happened is they, if this condition they get in contact, this media or whatever they get in contact with, it's all about selfishness. It's all about you know, unleash your desires, amplified your desires, making you more and more hungry for it, even though you don't need it. You know, and because you already have this condition before, precondition, right? You are like that. You think like that. You 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 say like that. Um, and outside excites you more 
you know they give they 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 hook you up with whatever you want so it end up being even more um even worse basically you, know, you pursue even further you sink even deeper so this is why you know people do that um so what is proper teachings what is you know conscience what what does it what does it bring to us really right okay first thing is none of us is perfect right we all have issues we have our problems we all have our um biases you know that that prevents us from fully realize our conscience our buddha nature so this this you know this takes a lot of courage and reflection to acknowledge this weakness and actually bring it out with the world you know not uh, focusing on defending this false ego this false self um, it's not easy especially when you're in position when you're working and stuff like that you need to have some sort of uh, uh, perspective or stand on some sort of ground so that you can have a negotiating stuff so all these things are pointing you, uh, pushing you towards, you know, blaming and all that stuff. Um, you know, everyone is at fault except yourself. That is a very um, terrible attitude, right? No one wants to hang out with people like that. So able to repent, able to say, I'm wrong, sorry, I want to change is number one. It's, it's going towards your conscience, going towards your Buddha nature. You know, your, this is what proper teaching should help you more and more aware, more and more calm, less, you know, uh, the, uh, less impulsive by, you know, less, you're not getting controlled by this impulse. Are you able to use impulse to your advantage properly? Um, when you do good things, because it actually makes you feel good and actually the right thing to do. That's why you feel good. So you don't do it just because you want to try to get publicities, uh, votes, um, praise. You do it just because. Just because. Um, that's what a property should be about. So you don't flaunt your merits. You don't flaunt your... You can introduce what you're doing to others. Otherwise, you know, especially when you're propagating, trying to spread some words, good words, good teachings, of course you need to promote them and then of course they need to put a face to the to the teachings so all oh, this person that I know follows the teaching of Buddha so those are fine right you can talk about it when when you have a chance with people around you but um, in the in the end of the day you do this because it's the right thing to do um, that's why it's, it's very you know proposition is very clear very simple very in very deep but very clear it's not convoluted it's not you know what if what if too many wandering thoughts you know it's very pure it's very sincere it's very um, clear and when you do it, it it's just the right thing to do you don't even need to overthink a lot the reason why we overthink a lot is because we have too many me 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 in, 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 in there not just ourselves but my family you know my, my wife my mom my dad those those are things we have to do because you have that relationship. But when we see that we understand that's 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 why we have this problem nowadays, conflict and all that, because everyone has me, me, me. Or oh, mine, mine, mine. Um so a proper teaching should always try to uh, bring everyone in in a sense. They they trying to bring out you know that truest part of yourself, you know, when it's wrong it's wrong, when it's right it's right. And sometimes it's not just right and wrong that's simple sometimes people have different perspective they need to take care of their family take care of their colleagues or their team that's why they act like that so you happen to be on the other side and you act like that you know so understand this is wisdom and then you're able to be more compassionate and then you won't be sitting there and say I'm right you're wrong and you you rather you know acknowledge something that you didn't do so that everyone 
emotion is settled down and then later when reflection kicks in they will realize oh you actually didn't do this you know I actually overstep so I feel sorry that's the kind of teaching we should have you know that makes everyone more harmonious and how to make it more harmonious uh, everyone realize they have issues everyone understands they have their perspective they have their stances they have to take because of who they are where they are and then they do what they have to do right but as long as they understand they try not to cause harm intentionally that's psych that's psych that's, that's, that's called psycho right um, or they're trying to uh, manipulate you know for your own sake that's not right they they do what they do they do what they have to do and they try to do it as fair as possible so that least amount of people are harmed in the pro- process that's the kind of mindset we should have right? more mature understanding of the world yet not losing our pure heart right so back to the actual teaching it talks about you know start with your families it's called about servicing letting go of yourself service render your service upon others onto others trying to um, sh- uh, share your time and effort with others right instead of just yourself you actually spend some time to serve others in whatever capacity you have if you're good at cooking you join a community cook for the community if you're good at you know singing music you perform for them so that they can all felt you know uh, they can all be uh, soothed by your music uh, you know so this is um, what it should be look like, looking like when we follow proper teachings so proper teaching means go do right by others do right by yourself follow your conscience you know don't allow your conscience to be drowned in your desires uh, do not allow your conscience to be covered by you know, layers of desires layers of sensory uh, sensor, sensory pleasure you know those desires and, 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 and at the same time like angers as well so allowing yourself um, to follow the path of conscience it's number one job right um, and people who follow the path of con- like follow their conscience they accumulate merits naturally it's not they want to they just have it because you do right by others they will do right by you and this is how merit works you have made connections unknowingly by just doing the right thing you know make people around you at feel at east and that translate into people trustworthy onto you and because trustworthy onto you more things can be handed to you to you know work on without worries because you will do your best to get things things done properly of course there will always be obstacles but you will try your best so this is very important right you don't try to promote yourself or self you know um, promo you're just trying to do the job properly and even though people people who ask for your favor might you know move on to other stuff if this is something that really benefits people and you're actually capable to do it you will keep doing it and you're not trying to get recognition or anything because you know this is something that is right it actually helps the people communities so you just do it right it's that simple sometimes and from there you give rise to you know more understanding because you deal with more stuff your understanding is wider you're no longer stuck in one way of thinking or a fixed parameter of thinking you no longer like that you are fully aware not fully aware but you are more aware the more you do the more aware you are and then the more you can put two to two whatever you learn you in your own room you know listening to the teachings of Master Ching Kong as you live your life go on and on you're able to put two to two what he said into real life not intentionally you just come up oh that's what he meant by this oh that's why I should be doing this because I witnessing cause and effect happening right in front of me because this person did not 
do the teachings of selflessness, you know, trying to step onto others in order to get what they want or being very impatient and rush things forward, you know, too impulsive, too abrasive, or even worse, they, you know, manipulate people and stuff like that. Now everyone's staying away from him or her and it becomes very obvious this person is not going to have a good time uh, in, in, in any any foreseeable future. So this is cause and effect right in front of you. Now you understand. Now you feel like, okay, the teachings actually talks about not just, you know, servicing to others, it's actually helping yourself in the process because you're no longer um, stuck in the mindset of, you know, to benefit myself means I need to uh, step onto other people because if I don't have it, uh, no one can have it. Or if I don't have it, um, you know, if, if I don't do that, you know, if I don't act like this, someone else will take it. Or if I don't act like this, uh, others will do so and so and so and so. You create a lot of this kind of scenario. A lot of them are usually done because of childhood. They don't have a good examples. You know, they, they see that that's how it is. You know, people like to compete against each other, are overly competitive and they become, you know, cutthroat. In, that's what we call it, cutthroat business and stuff like that. It becomes, I do this at the expense of, you know, the well-being of everyone. Trying to get the bottom line, like, you know, subprime mortgage crisis, 2007. A few group of people in one country causing the global recession. So these are very, 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 very start a uh, very stark example of bottomless greed, how how it leads to this kind of world, right? Um, also, you know, hatred, unable to let go. Few groups of people just can't let it go, just can't um, settle down, and then the other group wants to expand their territories. Now it becomes a war, as we can see now in Middle East. Right? It's, it's just too much desires, too much, um, too much ambition that really does not, you know, have anything to do with achieving full awakening. It's all just drown in, you know, say drown in drug number A and then you just hop into drug number B. You just drug yourself with different drugs, basically. You just hop from one drug to another drug, numbing yourself. Your true nature will never go away. You might go to Avicii hell and burn eternally, according to the Sutra, because of five transgression, great transgression. But your true nature will never be burned because it's 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 it is what it is. It's not gonna. It does not change. What's changed is all these, you know, wandering thoughts. This 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 reflection. This mirror that was twisted, right? But the original thing, the real thing, is not moving, right? These are the in, in depth understanding. And to do that, to get to that understanding, not just understanding, to, to experience that, right? Not just reading for a book, oh, this is what they say. It should be gradually moving towards experiencing that level of enlightenment, that level of living, the state of being or unbeing. I don't want to go all cryptic and all that. The whole point is, as we keep, you know, following our conscience, you tend to see that people are getting more and more calm and more clear about what they want. They don't try to suck up, suck it up to some people, trying to, you know, appease, trying to do something. They're just living in a state of constant awareness, constant joy, because they have nothing to worry about. They're also happy, happier, uh, free. This is a result. It does not come without hardships. It does not come without test, right? So that's what makes proper teaching and this um, cult or this you know, erroneous view different. That's what differentiates these two. The one who is proper teaching, he always, you know, 
not giving you the quick buck, quick solution. There's nothing such as quick solution. Those are delusional. Um, they're always trying to, you know, lure you with shortcuts. That's what cults are very good at. You know, earn quick bucks, uh, earn quick money, stuff like that. Uh, get famous, rich, quick. Everything fast, fast, fast. Ended up causing more harm than, than gain. Uh, ended up not getting what you really want or losing two arms just to get a just to get it losing a lot just to get that little little bit of advantage which is not even an advantage there's always a catch behind this and um, we might know in the brain but the heart's want what it wants you might pursue it either way so that's the problem right that's a very big problem that's why there's no way you can just suddenly change it it's, it's, it's not how it works right impatience is useless no matter how um, that's why like when you being impatient about your cultivation or about anything else it's a sign it's a sign that you're you're too eager to agitate it or something's wrong it's a sign something's not going well all these negative emotions or excessive emotions you know whether you like too much or you dislike too much or it, it means something's wrong it's like when you cough, something's wrong with the lung. When you have this negative stuff coming out, right? Proper teaching is like telling you how to endure it, how to understand it, how to actually slowly aware, you know, get through this storm, you know, or how to pick yourself up when you fail, right? On the other hand, erroneous view and what we call evil, evil ideologies, cult, etc., etc. They're only sketching the surface. They always go around the problem. They never touch the problem, never face the problem. They hop from one drug to another drug. If everyone, have you guys watched Matrix? Matrix has blue pill and red pill, right? So blue pill means you stay, continue, you know, in your own world, um, in a dream. Basically, you keep sleeping, never wake up. Some dreams are good dreams, some dreams are bad dreams. Red pill is like, you got a root awakening. You just get shocked and into waking up. Oh, the real world is um, it's not like that. That is the reality of the world. So, it's quite a very uh, stark um, direction in the firm, right? Trying to tell you, you still want to, you know, take the take the path of sleeping, even though this dream might be very sweet and nice, but they are not real, right? All these are. Um, not the reality or you want to wake up to the real world understand the pain the actual situation of the world is not uh, what you dream of and then find an actual solution to get out of this predicament because they're all being trapped by the aliens and stuff like that and the world is already post-apocalyptic something like that so that so people have this technology to numb themselves in the world of matrix right uh, where they can be anyone you know kung fu master you know multi million uh, so yeah so for us it's not easy to peel to swallow <laughs> it's not easy to peel to swallow proper teaching never tastes good it only tastes good when you wake up get detox a little bit and then you really understand you know no news is good news sometimes no, not trying to find things trying to trying to create things trying to find problems I'm not trying to say that we shouldn't be innovative and grow and stuff like that those things will happen alright as long as you live in this world as a human you will have to do that um, that's the nature of it but what we're talking about is a, a more how to say kind of like a perspective right you understand you have to act in the stage you act properly all the emotions and everything and you sincerely actually do that be compassionate be kind and then the more you do the wiser you are but at the same time you are aware that this is nothing you know I, I cannot get caught into it or if I get caught into it I must hope that I can recover as fast as I can from this dream 
and I don't want to stuck in the blue pill forever because it's a loop. It's going to keep repeat and repeat and repeat. And not every time you have a, you get a good dream. Sometimes a very, very terrible nightmare happens, like hell, or, well, so to speak, you know. So that's why um, you know, following proper teaching means that actually sit down and look at yourself, have a cold shower, basically, uh, and have a deep look in yourself and ask, where am I going? Um, Know, why why am I like this? How how do I achieve how do I how to say how do I or rather not saying anything, just observe yourself and and um observe what you have done. Observe the current state of yourself and let it all lay out before you. Like you know, before you're cooking you lay out all the ingredients. And you, you kind of know what to do. Right, I need to get started with this, you know, the garnish, the garlics and stuff like that. Blah, 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 blah. So does you. Like, what have I done with my life? What have I done with my weekend? I've done this. I haven't done that. So you, you need to pull yourself away from that, right? Proper teaching never allowed you to be obsessed because being obsessed means strongly attached to the sensory desires you know, that's why you attach you, you like the feeling of that or you hate the feeling of that so you're obsessed with the hate obsessed with the like and and this you know is is, is not small feat to able to pull yourself out of it and able to clear your mind you know above the above the noise is, is it takes a lot of effort um only when you clearer and clearer and clearer, you can see what actually is happening. And then that's why someone sometimes like when we ask Master Ching Kong or ask someone who is actually very clear about what they want, about some questions, they're able to use one word or two words, go straight to your heart, tell you what you're actually really looking for. Because you no longer get stuck in the so to speak, hamster mule. We don't stuck in the rat race anymore. They're able to see things clearly. They have no sticks into it. They don't allow themselves to sink into it. It's very addictive. And they detox themselves. They're able to see the whole situation. You know? And when you ask them, they see exactly what the situation is. They don't color it with their own perception, color it with their own, you know, wants and dislikes. They didn't try to put a colored tinted glasses, so to speak, to see the world. They keep it clear as it is so that they can actually properly assess it. Mm. If you want to make it less, you know, it more easier okay the second half to turn one's back towards one own flesh and blood become close to us other and people of no relation so what does it mean if reading literally is a bit weird but if we understand the context then we understand what it means you know people who are actually close to you you know your friends your family that been with you since you're young since you're born right they usually are the one who has the best intention for you. Maybe the way they say it might not be what you want to hear, but maybe they're able to see what you can't see, right? And because so close to them, we are blinded uh, with, um, we're too close to it. That's why we can't see properly. Because of that, you know, we're trying to find some way, some way outside. Maybe somewhere outside has a better solution for this. Trying to hop out of it. Hoping that you can find a better solution. Right. But the prob problem is in family issues is not something you can just, you know, stay away and then come back and then you're able to solve it. You need to um you need to step out and then come back in. Uh hopefully with a wiser perspective, right? Like, 
logically your own parents who give birth to you and they take care of you right we should be closer to them compared to someone who is who has no relation to you but who did nothing for you maybe their kindness is too sudden maybe they have intention because human relationship don't work like that you always have some set some sort of familiarity before we do anything for anyone right and we say if we say oh Bodhisattva and Buddha has you know boundless heart they always help everyone hey even they do that they don't do it out of nowhere they always have some sort of condition to follow Yuan Fen Sui Yuan okay they follow condition right and their condition accord they, they accord with the condition is based on you know past dealing with them you gotta have some sort of condition with the Bodhisattva before you, they can help you otherwise you wouldn't you wouldn't even listen to them because it's a stranger so right now what we're trying to say is to turn back one on flesh and blood is like someone who knows you all the time and whom you know all the time you're not you're not you know helping them you're not listening to them instead you allow someone else who has entirely nothing to do with your life until recently walk into your life and 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 dictate what you do and then you follow it like as if it's you know it's, it's the word of the you follow it everything to a letter that's actually happened around to my friends around us um, to, 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 to my acquaintance of mine this is because it's and when you hear them saying you will you feel like it's, it's something wrong something's off you know they're not aware because they're in it um, that's the problem they're not aware of it and when they're aware of it hopefully it's not too late usually a pang of re- guilt will be there in Buddhism we can say that maybe this one has um, has a uh, you know has past dealing with this stranger you know maybe they're not stranger in the past life you owe her she owe you but as far as we, what we can see right now in human current life it should not goes without saying you know with parents with siblings with long time friends they should be your priority whatever they say is always putting you in it it's the first whatever third party comes in where has nothing to do with you or maybe you happen to like that person or fell in love or stuff like that needs to put on the second order wait till you get closer and understand that person better good and bad Right, this is how it works. Say money. Sometimes you know you, you didn't even buy anything for your parents, but then when your friends comes, you buy like thousand uh, dollar worth of alcohol, or, you know, cars and drinks for them. It's not right. Like if your dad needs uh, a car for a long time, and then you suddenly buy a car for some stranger or boyfriend or girlfriend out of nowhere, what will you feel? So unscrupulous behavior is very very um, subtle as well it's not something you can justify your own doing as well it'll be like hey man this is my life and this is my money and blah 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 but hey like especially parents you can't use that kind of metrics and this is my money like how much they have to put just to take care of you right so those are those are foundations always wake up to the foundations those things are like I said they're not they don't feel fancy, they are not new, they have been with you since you were born, you don't feel any excitement out of it, because it isn't, because you're not, what do I say, that's not the foundation of your relationship. The relationship is familiarity, taking care of each other's, you know, um, conscience, you know, it's just genuine, it's a sincere relationship. A genuine, sincere relationship shouldn't be all exciting and thrilling. It, it can be, but it's not all about that. It's all about you know, being normal, being comfortable, being able to um, put down your guard and actually take care, taking care of each other without thinking. It shouldn't be about cost and benefit. It shouldn't be about, oh, I get money, you don't get money, that kind of mindset. Uh, that's the problem nowadays. Everything's profit. Even within family, it becomes profit-based mindset. Oh, if I take care of you, when you when you grow up you take care of me 
um, too much of that is not good. Yeah. So I'm just reading. Ah, oh, this is too late. Uh, okay, so here, um, yeah, Confucius already mentioned, right? If you don't, if you treat a stranger more, much better than who done nothing to you, you treat a stranger more than you treat your own family better, something's wrong. It's against your conscience. It's against your um, merits, virtues. If you, you know, put other people more than your own family or your own um, families, then it's it's not the right thing to do. Um, yeah. If someone suddenly, you know, treat you like their own parents, even though you did nothing for them, something's wrong. Of course, you can explain their past life and blah blah blah. Those those are very rare. Mostly it's because they have something to ask from you. Right? People don't do that. That's not how it works. Um, where, what is your intention? What's the bottom line? See, bottom line. What, what is behind your intention? Right. This is abnormal. What usually is normally is you do what you do, normal conduct, normal business, as in normal relationship, if you're just mad and stuff. Understand each other, get to know each other. And then, you know, slowly build up this. If you see this person can be friends, can be family, can be spouse, then you slowly build towards that direction. In terms of your family, the one you're born, your original family, it should always be number one or close to number one when you do things. Because, you know, this is, these are the people who have been with you, folks been with, been, who have been with you since you were born. And it's it's like, you know, common sense, but really? Sometimes not really. When you encounter someone you really like or encounter a situation, you know, like, you know, I really like this person or really like this game, stuff like that, you forgot about them. You're entirely obsessed with what you're currently pursuing, right? Nothing's wrong with that, but the thing is we need to put them in our consideration as well because they always put you in their consideration because just simply because they love you and that's how it is um, so how does how do we go about this right always treat your own folks right always treat your own you know brothers and sisters right and, and you, you do it in a normal environment without any excitement or any incentive you just do it that's what a person who follows their heart is. They follows their, their, their sincere, their, their Buddha nature is. Who follows their conscience is. They do it because it's right. They don't try to get something out of it. Right? Only when they done that and they expand it towards outside. That's how they do it. They are, this is how they are. And when they treat other people, they treat the same as if they are their parents. So it's, it's, it's the other way around. Right? You start with your own family, your own friends, and then you extend to others, and then to the society and to the strangers. Um, there is a certain level of, there is a, there is a, how to say, progress, a, a priority order over there. Uh, it doesn't have to be rigid, of course. Some people you really connected with very well, you appreciate them, it's fine. But there needs to have a sort of a, cascade uh, sort of a uh, priorities you know you don't listen to some stranger words just because you met them like one or two months and unless your parents are really 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 like problematic and stuff like that their value has issues otherwise you're always following your parents you always follow basically the idea you will listen to them at the very least Unable to understand this, what's the consequence? When you wake up, realize that this is all just a scam, romance scam, or money scam, whatever, business partner as well, scam. It's too late. You lost your money, you lost your integrity, you lost 
you know, might even be dragged into legal backwater, uh, legal um, backwater, something trouble from the legals, you know, from the communities because of your association with this person whom you do not know anything about until two months ago. That's very dangerous. Right? But understanding that humans are not 100% rational. When things happen in front of us, we get sucked in. That's for sure. Because you have the affinity with that situation or people. And because you're sucked in, like when we say when you fall in love, you don't think clearly. Call it lean eye now, That's why mom and dad or someone who is third party will say, okay, okay, okay. Calm down, calm down. So there needs to have some sort of um, pacing behind before you rush into it. Right. If this is something meant to be long term, it won't be rushed like that. It will slowly build up and it will last long. Like, you know, uh, the water that flows the longest will always flow slowly, steadily. They won't try to, they won't be like uh, Niagara Falls that falls very uh, rapid. It's not a rapid fall, it's a slow, steady f- um, flow of interactions. Those little memories collect together. That's how you. It's how you make it. All right. So it has to fulfill three three criteria basically when you um, dealing with people. First one is your, you know, it has to feel right by your conscience. Like uh, for lack of a better word, you your heart has to feel okay, feel right, not too excited, not too guilty. It's just right. Just it is the right thing to do. Yeah, I feel good about this. Second thing is basically emotion. It has to feel right. So, uh, it, when other people see it, when you see it in the third person, you feel like that's how, that's what it should be. Second thing is it has to be legal, of course. Third one is it has to be reasonable, right? Prioritizing a, a total stranger over your own family or uh, long-time friends is not um, reasonable. There are always exceptions, but on a day-to-day basis, it should be like that. Okay? We're talking about like 99% of the time. Right? So don't, 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 how to say, um, knowing that means that when you deal with people, you naturally know what is one, two, three, four, five. You're no longer stuck in that, you no longer get confused. Right? You have, you have no obligation to suddenly open up to outsiders, right? You don't just suddenly, hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Some people are like that, which is fine. If they're always like that, it's fine. But if you're not, or usually people don't do that, right? You just come into their life and then you get into their life and if you happen to work together and stuff, slowly build up, warm up, right? takes a long time as well. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's not. Everyone's affinity is different, but there's always an order of things. Uh, there are spontaneity in it, but it does not mean that we should mess up the order of things. Okay, that's it. Um, mm. Of course, what I'm trying to say here is very... First thing, I'm tired. That's why I'm, I'm choppy when I say it. All right. Second thing is the um, what we're talking about here is a worldly matter, right? When we talk about Buddhism, there's always worldly and otherworldly. We talk about worldly stuff. We have all these rules and all these, you know, you and me and how to engage with each other. Ren was the you know, right and wrong and. Uh, situations, these situations that that's the world we have to live with. That's the situation we have to deal with. There's something you can't get out of. That's why we need this. We need something to bring it back down a bit. Something resemblance, normalcy. Everyone can get a, get along. Uh, some sort of uh, priority, order of priority. Uh, when you deal with things, okay? When you put into action, it will be an entirely different thing, right? You will be like, oh my God, I like this. Oh my God, I get 
confused by this. Oh, I like this girl. I like this guy. And then suddenly you get stuck. You're lost. All the teachings gone. Right? But that's how the test comes in. You know, and then after that few months, you realize, I don't think I can go continue with this person. Something's wrong about this. Or some conflict happens. Maybe your family is not happy about it. You're not happy about it. He's not or she's not your partner or your new your your new friend or new partner or new new acquaintance not happy about it. That's where it comes to surface. That's when we learn all oh, this what Master Chikun is talking about. All oh, this what Chai Ao is talking about. Well, um, now I know why they say that. Now I know why the sages say that. Now I know why Buddha say that. They have experienced this before right not that we will follow 100% but we, we need to acknowledge that they do know about this situation because they already have the experience of that or they have the foresight to see way, way before that because people's intention are always not always straightforward it's always flip and flop and and sometimes they are we can't paint it as in oh this guy's evil we're trying to do that sometimes they they just like past life, there's really so many past life, there's so many um, mach- machine and cogs in motion. You can't, you can't predict everything. But what you can see is this interaction is too fast. You get too close, too quick. You should focus on, space it out, slow it down, especially relationship. Too fast, it will go away very quick. The, the one that lasts is usually warm up a little bit slower. Slowly, slowly, it builds up. It's not. It does not suddenly flash like uh, fireworks because fireworks comes and go very quickly. It's a warm, ongoing fire. So yeah, ask yourself like, am I like this normally? I'm not like this normally. Uh, is this change good for me and my friend family? Is this causing them stress and distress, or is it helping them? making them more happier with my action and their own action, right? As much as we like to say we're individual, independent, we can't be fully independent. First, we need companion, emotional support. We already can't be independent in this case. Even when you practice Buddhism, you still need a Sangha to talk about your problems unless you literally have a very strong will, mental fortitude. You can practice by yourself because you have no desires a lot. Those are rare people. Normal people, we need to have group, right? So first thing, we need to think about each other. Otherwise, the life is getting harder for us to go, go on. It's already hard now. Everyone's like very distant and all that. You feel lonely, you feel depressed because you can't find anyone to connect to. So think about, is my change of attitude causing distress to my family and friends, people who matters, who, people who will stay here with you after years, who will stand by you years. When you lose all your money, all your status, they will still be next to you. Those are real people, real stuff. Genuine friend, gen, your family, right? That's why we, we put them first because they are genuine. And then with outsiders coming into your orbits, of course, be friendly and then be curious, right? If it interests you, go ahead. But always have a learn to pace it out, slow down, observe. Is this too much? Am I going too fast with this? Right? Because I have desires too. Oh, I like this. I like how you should look and stuff like that. Oh, and then I jump head in and then I realize, oh shit, I'm sorry. Oh, good. Oh, no. Oh, I'm, oh Lord, this is not good, right? And then it causes a lot of stress to my family and friends. So you need you need a voice of reason. That's why good friends are also important. Sometimes you can't talk to your parents about that. You have to talk to your friends, people who actually you know stand by you. Third eye on this because when you're in it, you you can't see more than what you what they show you or what what you see, right? They're not trying to hide. Sometimes they just like that. So it's important to have third person coming in and say, hey, so that you're not wrapping up in your own world, right? It's important because, 
like I said, nothing is permanent. People change, all right? Relationship change, okay? Even between parents and children, why is it so strong? Because it's blood related. It's because it's, you know, it's how it is, right? Parents to children. And children to parents as well should be more more important than others. That's what we're talking about, filial piety, love and respect of parents, because they are literally the foundation of how you build relationship with other people. You realize that in future, there's a study, I think psychology studies say that some people most likely will find a partner that resembles, say, maybe their father or mother. Like, oh yeah, you, you, the partner that actually have the same behavior like their parents, maybe siblings, stuff like that. Someone that, because when at a, at a young, at the onset of your, you know, beginning of your life, you, you already get used to this kind of interaction, and that is a very reasonable thing, right? And and naturally, you want to find someone who give you that feeling sense of comfort and stuff like that and you do the same for them and this takes time and you need to cultivate good merits and virtues as well you have to be you have to get your priorities sorted and actually act on it uh, as well to you know to get yourself into that rhythm as in you know, that's how I treat people you know, that's how I treat my family my friends I do the same to outside Right. If I'm treating my family and friends one thing and then outside I'm an entirely different thing, people won't be like able to trust you a lot. Um, that's how it works, right? Uh, you treat your parents very well and then you treat other people like you treat your parents. That's really they feel a sense of closeness to you. They feel you're trustworthy. They feel, they, they feel like they can talk to you at anything because you will not harm them or hurt them. You will not judge them. You just like your parents, listen to children, always trying to help. So same thing, yeah. And then this is the foundation of our cultivation as well, all right? We can't just be all analytical and think and you know uh, observe. There's also compassion element in it. You know, you're able to feel what other feel, empathize with them, trying to get them out of the sticky situation, uh, try to make sure their happiness is long lasting, stuff like that. You're trying to trying to be be there as a positive presence because their happiness is your happiness that's how compassion works uh, that's how you know Bodhisattva and Buddha brings out that level of vows may every being be able to you know relieve from the sufferings it's circumstantial like sufferings of long uh, short life or sufferings of illness sufferings of uh, uh, relationships because people have so much mindset karma in the past they have so much sufferings that created as a result they crave for this so Bodhisattva will who, Bodhisattva means one who follows the path of full enlightenment will always you know first fix themselves first they're gonna be like I, I, I have so much crap in here and then they also understand because the crap they have also the same thing other people experience they're able to empathize they go through sufferings, they understand other people are suffers as well. And that becomes a connection with all sentient beings. Right? But when they feel compassion, what 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 do you mean by compassion? They feel the pain you feel. Like it might might not be directly, but they understand that they or they open up to experience what you experience. That's how it connects. So this is not all just in the head kind of thing. Buddhism should not be just purely in the head. It's also heart and mind connect together. Only then you can do things without trying to think too much. If you think too much and act, that's not 100% Buddhism. Right? If you just act without thinking, that's, of course that's not Buddhism. You're going to cause a lot of trouble. Buddhism is about middle path. Right? You need to harmonize these two. You need to actually rational, but at the same time, touching you don't try you just do what is right get the priorities straight work on your problems understand your problems what the what on earth is troubling you you know why you can't get out of this be patient fail fail gloriously understand why you fail you know 
be repentant because you know that your failure has caused trouble of people but at the same time be faith be be hopeful because you understand you are you, know, you are the master of your own destiny because you have to rewrite your own destiny by your own hands that no one else can they can only, they can only guide you Buddha can appear as Master Yun Gu as this uh, elderly lady or as a beggar as, you know like Manjushri Bodhisattva Manjushri uh, Wensu Pusa they can appear as a lot of things you know, or people to remind you so that you can bring up that I want to get out of sufferings I want to help other people to get out of sufferings I want to make all beings feel loved be careful that's how compassion comes out and that's how the great vow was made and in order to do that proper teachings is needed right I'm going back to the point here shun 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 means follow follow what follow your heart why follow your heart what is follow your heart does it mean impulsive does it mean just you know your desires or does it mean follow like at the very beginning your conscience what is right at the end of the day do I want to see myself doing this can I look at myself in the mirror if I done this very simple if five months from now who's gonna laugh around me right one year from now ten years from now who really matters in my life what really matters in my life and understand that then we understand what needs to come first and then we can put ourselves in motion everything we do and everything we say will always be towards that direction you know I want to build a very good relationship with my parents they're happy or I'm happy I want to build a very good relationship with my siblings they're happy I'm happy they're not happy you can't escape your blood it's very hard if they're in trouble that sooner or later it will affect you as well a little bit or more no matter even you live uh, 8,000 kilometers away different country still troubles you this is how it is so that's why foundation is important um, get priorities get get priorities sorted of course you go out enjoy you know experience life but don't allow yourself to be um, head over heels on, on something or someone and realize that it's actually empty hollow to excitement yeah I think I think that's it for this course um Yeah, we don't need to um, do a lot. We just need to do one thing right at a time. Understand what is right at a time. Let go of that desire one at a time. One moment leads to another moment. If we miss that, like my case right now, I miss that. I'm supposed to go out, have a gym and enjoy my life. Beautiful weekends, end up playing games all day. Is I made one mistake, one wrong thought, and this one wrong thought is, oh, I want to sit down and just maybe turn on the switch on the computer and maybe play one hour. Never trust yourself when you say that. Never trust yourself and say, oh, maybe one hour, maybe one more. Let's abandon the proper teachings. Basically, abandon your your hope to improve yourself. That's what it means to you. Proper teaching is not just follow the commandment. It's just follow your conscience. Follow what is right to make yourself a better person. What is better person? Clearer minded, less impulsive, able to understand your um, intention and motivations, able to clear it out, able to put it, put the right people at the right place in your heart. And then also able to act, manage your life properly. Only then you can talk about all this 
helping other people, saving other people. Those things are not going to happen if you already drown halfway in there, unable to get out. <laughs> right now, I'm drowning. People need help, you know. It's not easy. Seriously, it's not. The reason is self-delusion, right? You delude yourself. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then end up, end up, you woke up next day. Oh, sh- oh no, I spent whole day doing nothing, wasting. And you feel more depressed, you repeat. Like sometimes like when your parents here, we see you, we see you once in a while, you need to take the opportunity to go out with them. Just enjoy world and differently. If you live by yourself, and you're unable to control your own wandering thoughts and allow yourself to indulge too much in it, you get obsessed, you get sucked in. And then you waste so many times just to get back to square one, to normal state of mind, clear state of mind. It's it's a very big detour, you know. Uh, the only way around it is to force yourself. It's time to switch off, switch it off. It's time to sleep, sleep. When it's time to eat, eat. Right? Now I understand why Zen Master talk about when you eat, eat. When you sleep, sleep. You know? Be a mindful all the time. Don't don't suddenly think about oh, what if I do this? What if I do that? When you're doing one thing, focus only on that one thing. Nowadays, of course, you are demanded to do a lot of things at one time. Even then, that does not excuse you from putting your focus in order, right? Like playing piano, you have 10 fingers, you have left and right, that's it, high and low. It's just the speed, the pacing, the timing that matters. It's still one finger at a time, one note at a time, or two notes at a time, that's it, at most, 10 notes at a time, all right? There are sequences. None of your life is out of that. Even you are asked by three different person, you need to sort it out one by one. And when you get more skillful, you're able to split your attention without losing the quality of your work. So when you talk about Buddha and Bodhisattva and Pure Land and other, you know, Attain person, they can split their body into infinite level. That means their concentration is so powerful. It's like computer with a terabyte of RAM memory. They don't need to worry about doing five tasks because their mind is so concentrated. Their energy is not wasted. They can do a lot of things at once. Only when you all distracted and think about A, B, C, D, F, G, you get you get confused. You go, oh, what am I doing? Like right now, it's confused. When I'm saying something, I don't even know what I'm saying. So this this is very dangerous. Like you want a good career, you want a good relationship, right? You want a good life. If you're not concentrated, if you're not present at the moment, tune in to other people, connect with other people or with your job, with your stuff. How can you build anything on top of it? Okay, other people want to give you something to, to be on, to, 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 to continue. Because you're not connecting. You're constantly in your own world, hiding in the corner. That's why escapism is very dangerous. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have a little bit of escapee because sometimes it can be very tough. A little bit of, you know, drinks, a little bit of music, a little bit of travel is fine. Get away from it. But we need to face our day to day as well at the end of the day you need to come back fresher better right and 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 we need to have a routine and an and order of things to get ourselves in motion without having to think too much and then your body is still doing the same thing then you felt dissociation basically why am I not fulfilled why am I feeling my life is sucking away why am I feeling like I'm not going anywhere? Right? So this applies not just from relationship, also apply in your own health, apply in your own other stuff. So proper teaching does not extend only to religion or 
spirituality. You know, it extends to your everyday stuff, you know, physical stuff. That's why Diamond Sutra, right? Buddha, it described a very lengthy part of the sutra, described just Buddha eating, walking, asking alms. But they were, I haven't read in detail, but I, I heard like um, from uh, a teacher, they say that it just described Buddha, how he eat, how he sleep, how how he move, how he, it's a very mundane thing. But it just, he's very concentrated. He's always in there, always tuned in. He's not switched out anytime. Even though he's sitting there and meditate, right? His awareness is still there. He can sense you like 10 galaxies away. That's how powerful his processing RAM is, basically. Uh, and that's what we should be if we want to attain a success. Maybe not Buddhahood yet, but in this life, how do you attain that? You need to really there, grab, reach out to people, really be there. They can feel you. They can feel it. If you like dissipated, you're gone. All right, so back to this point. Turn your back towards the flesh and blood, become close to outsiders. Putting the priority in the wrong order, you only messed up. You only wasted time and energy because you don't know that person, right? You don't know them, have not put enough time and space, distance, people to warm up. So now you're too close only to realize it's not what you thought because you have all these imaginations about that person. Or you bought into their sales pitch, basically. And then abandon or burning bridges with your dear friends and sometimes hurting your family with hearts as well, looking at you overly obsessed of someone or something. That strain of relationship on someone who matters to you or something that has either later to uncertain values, you know, something like you don't know what to make of it. You don't know if this person is worth hanging around because you don't know them. It's utterly unreasonable. It's it's foolish. But yet it happens. Because we are not say in tune with our mind, heart and mind. And the brains keep saying that something's wrong, but your heart just keep doing it. That's why we need to like build up from our self. Alright, so I'll stop here. <laughs> this is such a long long drag. Um sorry about that, but uh yeah. Yeah, just a reminder to myself, if anything, it's just, yeah. Don't stray too far, man. Trust me, don't stray too far. One good day can be turned into one terrible day in the matter of thoughts, literally. It can be a very beautiful day if you fulfill, if you charge, and then when you talk, this kind of thing, you feel more energetic. But now, because of one misstep, trying to, you know, indulge in that gaming and stuff like that. Now you hooked up and I get sucked into it. You literally can't move. You can, but you just don't want to. Group use. All right, I'll stop here now. Uh, we'll continue next Monday. Uh, let's do our dedication of merits. Then we'll end this properly. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land. Pay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Ah, me, to, for. 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 Ah, me, to, for.